can um, just start this way. I'm Bonnie Ziff. I am going to be uh, uh, the interviewer. The tape is being recorded by Bob Ziff. And Betty, if you would introduce yourself and tell us where you currently live, what your birth date is. Where you're born. All the basic information born. that you mm -hmm. filled out on the sheet there. Okay. I am Betty Lighting. I was uh, I live presently in Ridgewood, New Jersey. However, I was born in Framingham, Massachusetts. Uh, the year was September 6th, 1922, which makes me almost 80 years old come September. And uh, at the present time, I am still working. I have been in real estate for 30 years, but I'm sure you're interested in knowing about my enrolling in the Coast Guard. Yay. Would you like to hear that? Yes. Um, um, don't look directly at the camera. Look slightly between to, the okay. camera. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Sit down. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Quiet. Because that's specifically what you're interested in. What yes. I, yeah. All right. Uh, during World War II, I was very young, um, actually 20 years old, and I had recently graduated from business college. And my first job was in a local bank in my hometown of Framingham, Massachusetts. And one day, during my lunch hour, when I went outdoors, there was a trailer outside recruiting for, uh, the Coast Guard was recruiting women. And the slogan was, don't be a spare, be a spar. Well, I was very curious. Uh, we were all feeling very patriotic, our boyfriends girls we went to school with, enlisted in the service, my very dearest friend in the Army. So I had some interest. And in talking to the recruiter, she told me what it entailed and where possible, that we had a choice of where we wanted to be stationed. Uh, I would have to get permission from my parents since I was not 21. And I went home very excited about the application. I do believe I had to fill out an application my father said, no, absolutely not. No daughter of mine is going into the service. Well, my ma all I needed was one signature, so I, my mother <laughs> was very understanding, and she went along and signed. And the day that um, I had to leave, I thought, oh, what have I done? I don't want to go through with this. I was really very frightened, apprehensive, not knowing what it was going to be all about. Well, we, uh, were, we gathered at a certain point in my hometown, got on a train, and we were sent to a uh, recruiting station in Palm Beach, Florida. Uh, we were stationed at the Biltmore Hotel for our training. And most of us did work that we were familiar with and because I was in the banking business, I was assigned to the finance office. Now, where were you trained? I'm sorry. Oh, I was trained. It was a three-month training program in Palm Beach, Florida. It was the Biltmore Hotel, which was taken over by the Coast Guard. Our meals were wonderful. I blossomed into 20 pounds heavier. <laughs> it was very, very nice. The training was very strict very intense and at the end of three months they did give us a choice where would you like to be stationed well I was still a little homesick so I thought New York isn't too far from the uh, Framingham Boston area I selected New York and my second choice was Washington and third Philadelphia none of these places were too far from home uh, so uh, it was New York City that they assigned me to, and uh, we had the Coast Guard had taken over um, a hotel. We were stationed in a hotel. I had two roommates. I'm still in touch with one of them. I don't know what's happened to the third, and uh, the roommate, we, we do converse. She lives in Florida, and when we spend time in Florida, we do see each other. She's the same age as I, and... It's very nice. And then there's another girl who was in our, on our floor where we were housed in the uh, hotel. And she's in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. And we converse by phone periodically. 
Uh, she's not in too good health. My other friend in Florida has hearing problems. I fortunately am so far so good. <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned, I, I'm still employed. I love what I'm doing. And uh, during the war, when I was stationed in New York City, it was at, um, let me think, on Broadway. Yes, that's Lower Manhattan, 42 Broadway to be exact. And I was assigned to the finance office. And one day I was informed that Commander Sponberg of the 3rd Naval District had asked that I be his personal secretary. And I was very, uh, I thought, well, if I don't want to do that, I'd, I think I'll tell him. I said, I'm not really interested in being his secretary. Well, I didn't realize I didn't have a choice. <laughs> You're in the service. <laughs> so I worked for Commander Spomberg for the two years, and it was very pleasant. And uh, he had two of us working for him, and every evening, his chauffeur would uh, give us a ride to our hotel. He was very kind. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very, it was interesting, but it was sad at the same time to see um, the boys who would leave on a daily basis for overseas duty. And we just felt good that we were helping. It was uh, an emotional time, happy and sad. There were many activities planned for service people. I met my husband in the service on the subway. He was a cadet in Merchant Marine, Kings Point Academy. And he and a buddy uh, wanted to, uh, I was with my roommate at the time, and uh, we got on the train, and he wanted to know where to get off at Times Square. Well, that was the beginning of a 52-year marriage. And <laughs> I didn't know his name. He didn't know my name. I simply told him where we worked, what we did. And the next day, he went from the first floor up to the 14th floor where I was to find me. And that was the beginning of our relationship. And where were the offices? 42 Broadway. Yeah, and that's also where you were? In New York. That's where I was stationed. You were, you were living and you were working there? Uh, no, I was just working there. We were, we were at a hotel, let me think of um, 72nd Street. Do you know what the name is? I'm trying to think of what it is. Embassy Hotel on 72nd Street. I don't know if it's still there or not. I know the office is not there because years ago I wanted to go back mm -hmm. and see it. And it's another company, of course, that's taken over. And uh, Now what was the, in the office of the, um, the officer that you were working for as the secretary, what was his position? In he was a commander, Commander Spomberg. And I have a picture of him and I often wonder what has happened to Commander Spomberg and his wife, because I eventually got to know his wife. Uh, they, were, they were young, so perhaps he's still living, I don't know, but it would be wonderful to know what's happened to him. Uh, he was in charge of the 3rd Naval District, and anyone who had to see him had to go through B and so forth. Uh, it was very, very interesting. And there was certainly, socially, a lot to do. We had dances at the Waldorf Astoria and tea time at another hotel. And as I said before, it was happy and sad at the same time because boys would leave and we felt badly. And then I had one of my dearest friends wanted to go. To, we had a choice. We could have been stationed in Alaska or Hawaii. I didn't, still didn't want to be that far from home. She went to Hawaii and had a wonderful time. So I don't know what's happened to her. I've lost contact, I would say, with everybody except the two that I mentioned. And it was a wonderful experience. And looking back, I mean, it just seems, oh, I did go through it, yet at times I think, no, it was just a dream. <laughs> it's hard to, re you know, think yeah. that you really went through that. When did uh, you when did you come out of the service? Okay, I was enrolled in forty three in nineteen forty six January. Um, I was uh, discharged, honorable discharge, of course, uh, and married in February the next month.
Were they discharging everyone at that time? or It was voluntary. It was voluntary. Okay. So I could have stayed in. And, you name that? Uh-huh. And uh, a lot of the girls were leaving, and so it was time to leave. Now, your uniform, what was your uniform? Oh, the uniform was very perky. It was navy blue, and we had a white uniform and a cute little hat, and uh, gloves were appropriate in those days. We always wore our white gloves. And I've had my navy, I don't know what happened to the white uniform. I have a seersucker, that was for summer. The white I don't have. I do have the seersucker uh, uniform. And the navy blue, I had that preserved. It's in my attic. And one of these days, I'm going to try to get it on and see if it'll fit. <laughs> When you said your friends um, were going in, and that helped bring you into it, um, it was there. There was specifically your friends were going into the services. Yes, they were different branches. My very close childhood friend went into the army, and for some reason, I was more impressed with the recruiter. I think it's because I talked to her first, and she was she had already gone. I wouldn't have seen her anyway, so. Would you have considered enlisting? Had you considered enlisting before the recruitment? No. That did it. <laughs> that was good salesmanship. I was going to say, <laughs> take a lesson. Right? You're right. Um, no, the thought didn't occur to me until uh, I walked into that trailer. And it and was patriotic? A patriotic feeling that I wanted to do something for my country. Oh, and we had an army base station in our hometown. And we go to the many dances. There were about two a week. And every week, you, you could see that someone was missing. They were gone. And that just made you more and more determined that it was a thing to do to serve our country. Did you, um, I hate to ask you sad things, did you lose some friends during that time? Yes, I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sure, so. Very sad. Too. Yes. Um, do you? What is some of the music that you listened to at that time? Oh, well, those are the days of Frank Sinatra. We were at Radio City Music Hall when he was first becoming popular and the girls were screaming. I don't think I was one of the screaming girls, but <laughs> I was there. And uh, Benny Goodman, and uh, who's the one that uh, was killed in Glenn an. Miller? Glenn Miller. Oh, yes. Many, many affairs, dancing. Was there, when Glenn Miller passed away, was there um, a ripple effect in the, because he was in the Army and very much a supporter, like the USO type thing? Yeah, we all felt very badly and sad. Did you used to go out in the town at all, enjoy New York? During oh, the very much so. <laughs> we saw many, many plays, museums, whatever New York had to offer. We were, it was a very exciting time for a young girl. How many um, people would you say you worked with or were in your were In, in my program? unit? Yeah. Well, I was in the finance office and it was a huge, huge office. And I wasn't there very long when I was sent to the private office to work for Commander Spomberg. So there were only two of us, really, yeah, that we saw each other every day. However, in the next office, where there were two officers there that they were in charge of another division. I'm not sure what it was, but we were also involved in with them, and they were very nice. I know that the recruiter is the one who brought you to the Coast Guard, but it's kind of a quiet branch of the service, not quite as big as the Navy. That's yet. true. Did you have any thoughts along those lines when you joined? It didn't bother me at all, and uh, I was very proud to be a spar. Don't be a spare, be a spar. <laughs> and I never regretted that I didn't go into the Navy or the Army. I really, down deep, I didn't want to go into the Army. I thought it was just too big. Mm -hmm. I knew this was a smaller organization. Now, you're training at the Biltmore. Now, you're mm -hmm. hanging out on the beach there, right? <laughs> no. Oh, it was a very, we, ma we marched in the morning. I mean, we were kept busy uh, practically Did all day. Classes? Classes. And, mm -hmm. and then marching and mm -hmm. um, calisthenics. 
Did you do any stuff on the water? Or no, we there? didn't. No, it was just marching around the water. <laughs> oh, at one time, let's see, this was during my training. You're absolutely right. I forgot about that. I have a newspaper clipping back home. I didn't bring it with me. Uh, they wanted to know if uh, anybody would like to learn how to swim who didn't know how, and I was one of them. And Mr. Fischler, I, Fissler, that was his name, that he could teach anyone how to swim whether they were frightened of the water or not. I thought, well, he's the one for me because I don't like water. And I was in the class and I passed, I learned, but I've never overcome the fear of water. Uh -huh. I still don't like to swim. My husband and I live on an acre of property. We have a, a built-in swimming pool and I don't think I've been in it for more than once a year in the past 20 years. <laughs> Did they, did they train you in any, I know you had a lot of business background, but did they train you in any specialties while you were in, uh, in training down the road? Um, not, not that I can recall. I do know it was uh, for the storekeeper, it was a storekeeper class. It was all in mathematics and uh, yes, along those lines. So your, your title And we were tested. Well, you, your title while you were in the service. Oh, I started out as in the storekeeping class, and I went to storekeeper first class. The next step would have been petty off chief petty officer, but I didn't stay in long enough. Uh, that was the yeah. next step, and I did want that extra stripe. <laughs> did Did you get some leaves, and where did you go on your leaves? Yes, we had some leaves, and uh, and I was always so glad to get home and see my parents, and I'm one of six children, and my father was eventually very proud that his daughter was in the service. <laughs> and so it really ended up well. I had a really great question, I forgot. <laughs> oh. Um, did you, actually, did you encounter anybody famous in like the USO programs, or anybody, do you have any brushes with anybody you've known? I'm trying to think. Uh, not when I was in the service, no. We danced to big name bands, but I did not run into anybody personally, no. Did you, um, in New York, were there blackouts? What was the general environment during the war? No, we never had a blackout in the years that I was there. No, um, no extra. That I recall, no. But in the general environment of the United States at that time, did you have to, was there, there was some rationing? Uh, yes, there was. I rem I know my mother, uh, I can remember, there definitely was rationing. But of course, when you're in the service, you get your three meals a day and you're not aware of any of this. So you were, your messing was in the building that you worked in? Right, and they kept the same chefs that the Embassy Hotel had before the Coast Guard took over. Uh, we were fed too well. <laughs> <laughs> and at night, oh my. And uh, the, um, we had a um, snack bar. They didn't call it that. I don't recall what we, P, P, I can't PX? think, PX or something like that. Uh, anyway, every night after that, you can go in there for ice cream and grilled cheese sandwiches, and we all had more to eat. <laughs> And as a enlisted person, you were not allowed to uh, mingle with officers. And I thought, well, they're not going to tell me what to do. If he happens to be an officer, I'm going to date him, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> but your husband was a guy. He was a cadet. Oh, okay. He was a cadet. So you're a cadet. Yeah. I know what my question was. It was about back to the training. Who who trained you all? Was it women? Women training. Oh. Women officers trained us. And they were all spar. All spars. And they they, they were lieutenants. They, they must have gotten in. Well, they did. They they had been in a longer period of time, and they trained us. Much more career. And no, any regular uh, coast guard or male, men? Uh, no, not until, no, we didn't encounter any men until we were assigned to our post in New York City. Now, aside from marrying your husband, because mm -hmm. that obviously affected your life strongly, 
Is there any other ways that you feel that this whole experience really affected your life in, in some of the decisions you've made? Well, I think it affected my whole life tremendously. First of all, I never wanted to leave my hometown. I'm one of six children. No one has ever left. It's where families, you know, you grew up and married locally, and I wanted to be part of that. But because of the circumstances, uh, things change and you accept it, and it's made a very adventurous life. I, <laughs> I met people from all over the country and my husband was from Chicago so when we were married we lived in Chicago then transferred to San Francisco to Los Angeles and San Francisco New Jersey so I think it's made my life in some ways a lot more interesting met more people my family sisters they know they've been with the same it's more family which is wonderful I think it's very important but I think because of this experience, I've met a lot of interesting people, saw different parts of the country, and it was a great experience. <laughs> That's our, our vocal interlude. Oh. How did you wind up in New Jersey then? Is that for your husband? That was a transfer, yes. Uh, his job took him to Los Angeles, San Francisco, and then a transfer to New York. I fell in love with California. I did. It was our first home. I did not want to leave. I said, money is not important. I'll stay here. I'm satisfied. But men are very um, interested in getting ahead in their company. Mm -hmm. So we were transferred here. And he said, we'll go back to California. Well, we never did get back. <laughs> but you know what? It turned out to be OK because my children, I'm only four hours away from the Boston area, mm -hmm. and they get, did get to know their 15 cousins. So it's all turned out very what, well. What does he do? Does he was a district. He's retired now, of course. Mm -hmm. I'm not retired, but he is. <laughs> he was a district manager for his company. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hersey Manufacturing Company, they made water meters. They sold to cities and towns. And we had a very interesting life met lots of nice people, the waterworks conventions all over the country. And uh, I used to call myself Miss Betty Convention because <laughs> I was the hostess, you know, when, oh. when you're a salesman. Yeah. And basically, that's what he was. Uh -huh. We'd have to entertain our, his clients. Oh, wow. So. Um, my, my husband slipped me a note on your friends, which you had always already speak, spoke of, your, your roommates who were your good friends. You wrote also enemies. Did you make any... Uh, oh, really? Did you clash with anybody in the service or...? Not really. You seem too nice to clash with them. <laughs> <laughs> They've asked me that same question about real estate. Have you clashed with anybody? I think that's why I like my job. I, I mean, there's something interesting, fascinating about everybody. I mean, that's how I look at it. I, um, did you, you were, you didn't receive any um, GI benefits. You never went back to school, right? No, I'm sorry that I didn't, because one thing I regret that I didn't do that. I had an opportunity to go back to, to go to college, a four-year college. And in retrospect, I wish that I had done that, mm -hmm. but I didn't. Did you now, so when you finished the service, you went to work, or did you? When I finished the service, I was married, uh, and I worked for Pacific Telephone Company as a service representative mm -hmm. for seven years, and then I had my family and stayed home until I went into real estate. And that was 30 years ago, right? And they were in, um, my daughter was in junior high, and son was in high school. Have you joined any veterans organizations? No, but I was seriously thinking of doing that. Uh, we are now spending six months in Florida, and there's a veterans association there that I was going to do it this past winter, and I didn't, but I fully intend to. Oh, this should be fun. Where do you go in Florida? Naples, the West Coast. We, uh, we just bought property in Sarasota. <laughs> Where? Sarasota. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's a lovely area. Oh, that's wonderful. Like off subjects. <laughs> um, 
what ha, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Did I what? I'm sorry. Did your experience influence how you thought about has changed your thinking about the military and in wars in general? World events, war, what's happening? Well, I just think it's a dreadful, and I thought at the end of World War II that we were going to live a quiet, peaceful, lovely life. I'm very disappointed as to what's happening. The world, as my daughter says, you lived in the best generation, and I think we did. I think we're going through terrible times. There's so much greed and hate and killing. It's very sad, very sad. Does your connect to, connection with, your, with the military make you... Feel more? Yeah. Oh, sure it does, of course. For the soldiers? For everybody, yes. And the children who are being killed, I, I can't watch the news. It's very upsetting, very. Is there anything you'd like to add that we didn't talk about? Let me see. What can we add? Uh, I can't think of anything except that I'm very proud to have been a member of the military service. Certainly did our best. And the people, the girl, my uh, contemporaries, we did our best. I think it's, uh, from my standpoint, I'll throw this back out to you, you can, it is so unusual to meet women who participate actually active military I in know. the war of I the know. Second World War. And the spars, of course, were paved the way for the women in the Coast Guard mm -hmm. and, the, and Coast Guard Auxiliary. It, I think it was the, the start of the Coast Guard Auxiliary, right? Yeah, it was the reserves became the auxiliary. The reserves became the auxiliary. So oh, know, is really that it? Brought a lot of oh, the reserve is the auxiliary now. The reserve became the auxiliary at that time. Part of then it was a split off. It was oh, split. he knows more about the history, so I think you have a lot to be proud of. Oh, of do you history. have any veterans in your organization now? Oh yes, um, we have. I, the auxiliary has a lot of veterans. I mean, every war, every because a lot of people, you know. I'd love to join, time. except I'm not a sailor. <laughs> you can do PE with us, right? Well, I think we've covered everything. Yeah, I think okay. so much. Oh, you're I'm very welcome. Do you have pictures did or anything you want to show us? Yes, I did. Okay, we have oh, oh, okay. Why don't you tell us about them? Uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll shoot. Then we'll shoot. All right, let me see. What do I have? That's when I was first oh, went in it. Oh, you so we can get on camera. Well, we'll... Let's see. And this is Commander Spomberg. I want to know what happened to him. And this is the office I was in, in the finance office, contracts and leases. That's what we did. Let's see. And there's the white uniform that I don't have anymore. You can make a copy of any one you'd like. And this is my husband and I. I met him on the subway, I told you that. And that's it. Well, let's uh, shoot these We're going to shoot the pictures. And we'll have you just talk about each one a little bit. I'll do that. Well, okay. Let's well, hold on one second. Why don't we, um, why don't you pull down? Okay. I'm just in a bad position here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you will photograph today. <laughs> okay. Let me shoot a low resolution picture. Uh, I have this. No. Where my son, who's the editor now, can, he was a cameraman for a while. Mm -hmm. And all he does, he's obsessed with taking pictures of his only son. I said, Walter, you're not allowed to come here with your camera anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is for his one and, one and only or for uh, his son? one and only. Mm hmm. How old's the kid? Ten. Oh, wow. Uh, well, we're, just, we're not so good. We don't take quite as many. So. Uh, do you? <laughs> not so good. So this is you. Do you think that's Central Park? Oh, this is Central Park. Let's put that one in here. This one is Central Park. This is you and your husband. Do yes. You know that was? That was in Central Park, probably of 45. 1945. Now, how long have you been dating? What a great uniform. Hey, guys. Wasn't it nice? 
Better than what they're doing now. <laughs> yeah. And this was during my working days. This was in 1943 in the original office that I worked in, in the finance office. And where are you in this photo? I don't know where I am. If I'm in there. Okay. I have to be there, but I don't know where. This could be me right there, but I'm not sure. Hard to tell. What are you all reading in this photo? Well, you're all holding papers. Contracts and, and leases. That would ah. make sense. That was your department. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. Okay, and this is the... That's the guy I worked for. Guy. Guy. Yes, that's the gentleman I worked for. He was a character. He was on his second wife, and the minute he walked in the office, I said, you have a message from Betty. Betty was, she didn't trust him, I don't think. She wanted to make sure he came to the office. <laughs> he was fun. <laughs> if you could write, write out some of the names, we'll see, maybe we can research and find out. Really? What happens to these people, yeah. All Always. right, I'll do that. Okay. And there you are in your white uniform. When did you use this uniform? For dress, you know, yeah. if we're going to the Waldorf Astoria where they have the service people there for dancing oh. and, <laughs> and <laughs> food. It's a nice uniform. It came with a white skirt. Mm-hmm. And a white hat. Uh, there's no hat on that, is there? And that, I don't remember when that was taken. I think when I first went in because I just have one stripe there. And you only have one, one there. They're all in the beginning. I don't have any when I left. I'm, I'm going to expose your lock right now. Yeah. That should be all right. Don't you Close think? Door. Everything looks good. You think so? Mm -hmm. Okay. You reshoot them again without. <laughs> okay. You fix them all, and this time we'll just we'll shoot them. So we, and we'll Let's cut write them. You want me to write the names yes, down? Please. Okay. Well, on the back here. Where do you want me to oh, write it? Uh, write it on right over here. Okay, here? Here? Yeah, just stop it. Co customer's mouth. It really does. So tell me about this picture here. Which one? The one that's right under here. Well, that was taken when I first went in. Okay. I don't think I have anything written on the back here. No. Lieutenant Richard Wynott, Commander Garland Spomberg, mm -hmm. and a yeoman, June Harlow. She was our roommate, former roommate. And where were you based? New York City with these people. Was this down, down in Lower Manhattan or where was? 42 Broadway. That's where they were, wow. Yep. Okay. Wish I knew what happened to her. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. you can do that. Wow, this modern age is too yeah. much. Who was? Where was your your husband? Was in the Navy or a Coast Guard? Uh, no, no, he was uh, a cadet in the Merchant Marine, and yeah, and he was discharged. He had a a medical discharge. Mm -hmm. And tell me about this picture. Oh, it's just one that was taken when I was in the service, when I first started, mm -hmm. in my dress uniform. Okay. This really looks great. The Bonnie. Is for, yes. If you need to call me, always call me at the office on the voicemail. I will do that. Oh, he's so sweet. Does he usually nap? Yes, he, he does. He does, but his nap was completely thrown off today. Oh. By, um, not by you, but by his speech therapist who moved his time to a, hit the middle of his nap. Oh, you time. can't do that. So it's been, he was asleep, I woke him up, and if he sleeps oh. for 10 minutes, he won't go back. To, he, he'll wait, you can wake him up. Problems driving. No, no traffic. One of the psycho drivers on the road. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see you. You're having fun. You're having fun? Tell me about this picture. Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that too was taken in my dress uniform when I first went to all these pictures. 
Mexico when I first went in. After that, I was too busy. <laughs> I just have one son, one grandchild. The joy of life, right? Oh, I have. A, ever, ever since he was born, my day is Wednesday. I don't work on Wednesdays. Oh, that's nice. I'm with Joe. Oh, and then he's 10 now. Is that the one that says? Because uh, my mom, like, and my sister, he's the only grandchild, and it's... They worship him. The sun rises and sets. Isn't that them. wonderful? So they, they're not too far away. You know, the, uh, Hi, the socialite, she, uh, she'll take a day off. She's going to take a day off from work to take him to Sesame Point, you know? <laughs> Just like, oh. she's... <laughs> She's so anything for him. Isn't that wonderful? Tell me about this picture. Oh, that's when we were courting. That was in Central Park. Shortly after I met George. Okay. Why was he medically discharged? Sinus. Sinus? Bad, bad, oh, bad so sinus. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't see that photo before. I didn't show it to you before. Stuff went in on me. Why was there a reason it's turned? Mm-hmm. Looks okay. better. Oh, okay. What are you going to do with these pictures? We're going to put them on the uh, the tape that we into send. Into the tape. Really? So they'll be right on there, and you can see. Oh. Oh, well, if you could find out about these people, mm -hmm. I'd be yeah. thrilled. Bob's pretty good at finding out. But we'll I check with the coach. You know what? This is the best, <laughs> best time in your life. I love. I loved everything I did. I loved being in the service. I loved working for the telephone company. Then I thought I never have children. I was the oldest of six, and I thought God is punishing me because I used to say I'm not having any breaths. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> oh, I've gotten worn up. Okay, great. Okay, well, fine. You are a lot of fun, Betty. <laughs>